So I guess we can go on and talk about um, where we are right now with treatment or management of soft tissue sarcomas and GIST. So we'll start with soft tissue sarcomas and um, you know, basically discuss what is your approach to um, the usual, you know, say high grade pleomorphic sarcoma that comes to the door and what are the standard chemotherapies do you use and how, how do you think chemotherapy, is it beneficial and which subtypes is it beneficial and what are the limitations of chemotherapy? Yeah, those are, those are all really good questions. And I, and I think that there's a lot of different answers. And a lot of what we do in clinic, and anytime we're discussing chemotherapy with patients, is you know, we, we reach a decision about whether to use chemotherapy or not through shared decision making with the patient. The patient has to be engaged because any type of treatment, whether it's chemotherapy or targeted therapy, is gonna, gonna have side effects and could interfere with quality of life. But, for the, for the gen, in general terms, when I see a patient with metastatic or inoperable soft tissue sarcoma, let's say an unclassified pleomorphic sarcoma, if they're young and otherwise healthy, no, no substantial comorbidities, my general regimen is doxorubicin plus ifosfamide. We use 75 milligrams per meter squared and for doxorubicin, and we give 10 grams per meter squared usually for ifosfamide. Um, and the reason we do that is because that's the regimen that has the highest success rate in terms of progression-free survival and response rate. And there's some hint that it may provide an overall survival advantage. There's certainly a trend to that for the patients with inoperable soft tissue sarcoma. Right. And I think that's the same. So it's, uh, as you said, it's really, you have to take into all the patient factors, take into account all the patient factors and the disease factors and decide and combination chemotherapy is really even what we recommend if the patient is uh, you know, otherwise healthy and wishes to get, because if you get that great response, you don't know there are those patients with locally advanced or slightly inoperable disease that you could actually convert into operable disease. And then subtype becomes important in deciding you know, if there's synovial sarcoma or a myxoid round cell liposarcoma or even a leiomyosarcoma or mm -hmm. you know, UPS. These subtypes do have a higher response than some of the rarer subtypes that we still need to learn more about. Yeah, so. I think your point about the patients with oligometastatic or patients with locally advanced disease, if we can shrink tumor enough, um, they may be eligible for, um, for surgery, they may be eligible for radiation therapy or ablative procedures in order to render them disease free. And those are probably the subset of patients who do get long-term long -term benefits um, for the for the GIST patients, I think it's it's a little bit you know it's a little bit different than the sarcoma patients. For for GIST patients in my practice, when they're inoperable or metastatic, uh, we always do mutation testing 100% of the time just to understand what the mutation is for all the reasons we've discussed previously, and then we choose the therapy based on the mutation subtype that the that the patient may have. Um, and then we assess, you know, assess response, usually by CAT scan. We usually do a CT scan, abdomen and pelvis, chest X-ray, blood tests, initially every two or three months. Follow the patient over time as long as they're benefiting. Uh, if they have a robust response, we might stretch that out a little bit. And then we monitor the patient for progression. If they develop progression and it's limited, for instance, there's a solitary lesion in the liver that's progressive, then we might treat that with a localized approach, either radiation or hepatic arterial embolization, resection. Uh, if the patient has widespread progression, multiple lesions and different organs, then we really, at that point, need to switch systemic therapy, look for clinical trials. There's lots of exciting clinical trials right now. Nice. And you're right, like all the retrospective, you know, even though it's retrospective data with surgery has shown that patients with limited progression um, or with patients who are even actually responding or doing mm -hmm. well, but they have residual disease, they could derive benefit uh, from being rendered NED by surgery. So just as very neat, very different from the mm -hmm. other subtypes and almost a whole different disease by itself.